dude, you forgot about the insert. You yeah. forgot all about the insert now. <laughs> all right, all on you, Mo. Go for it. All right, that's cool. Um, okay, so I want to talk about the macro, then I want to talk about what traders should do and how they should um, basically anticipate and how should they react to this. So FOMC are minutes that are released uh, from the previous meeting that is done. Um, the reason why we look very carefully at the minutes is sometimes more information is added, right? So the market sold off to around 3,600 last FOMC, and everyone today was waiting for the minutes. The minutes were supposed to come today at 2 o'clock, and what we're looking here on the minutes is we're looking if anything's changed. If nothing's changed, we've already accepted that and the market's already reacted to it. So what happens? People that have hedged their accounts, they're going to start selling their hedges, which is going to run up the stock market, right? So you need to know that going in. Now, people that are smart and have played the market for a while, they understand that the first four or five hours of the FOMC, there's chops. So you get um, a good volatility about 10, 15 minutes before FOMC, and then the real move comes after. So I woke up. Uh, figured out that the market's going to be flat, but no, the market starts dropping. So I added an IWM hedge. We made about 100% on it, sold it. Uh, our hedges are supposed to be kept, but you're up 100%, sell it. Uh, went back, took a nap, came back, market flat, nothing really happened. And here's where you have to be very smart. You need to know what you're waiting for. If you're just like blindly waiting for the minutes to come, not knowing what you're looking for so we were looking for two things in the minutes one was are they going to talk about quantitative tightening like to what aspect numbers they didn't talk about are they going to talk about an interest rate increase which they always do so they did talk about it last time uh pavel spoke he said they're looking at 0.75 and possible one percent increase the numbers that came in today were between 0.50 to 0.75 so again we've already digested the news and sold off Mark, market's forward looking. So if you were holding hedges, you're going to start selling. You start selling, the market maker needs to start buying to balance. We've talked about this last episode. So what happened? Market ripped. And again, I put screenshots like what Mark says, always give proof. Screenshot on Discord, Twitter, Instagram. We added SPX at 350, sold at 13. That went up to 17. So that was about a 400% increase. What I'm trying to tell you is, yeah, you know, you understand the macro, but you need to anticipate what might happen and what ha what happens if A happens, what happens if B happens, because you need to react to both situations. I wasn't blindly waiting to buy calls either. If if they came up with a rate increase one or 1.25, I would have gone into puts. The reason why we do drop and rise in the after the FOMC, I think the for the first 10, 15 minutes is because and this is something that I didn't know and I learned it from my mentor is there's algos trading and they're trading based on news. So what they're watching for, they're watching for keywords. And as a keyword is released, they start buying or selling. So you have to be very careful getting in and out. You have, have to almost wait for the move to happen for you to get into something. So we waited for the sell off to finish. The moment it finished, I added calls. Now my calls went up 50% then down 50% couple of times but i have to hold through the storm for you know you to ride it because there's nothing in the minutes yes the minutes were super negative like if you watch twitter it was like recession is coming they're already assuming recession um feds taking none of that matters what did i say like none of that matters if it's a repeat of what happened last time we've already priced that in if something changes you look is it good or bad if it's good you know you could buy a call if it's bad you buy a put but if nothing changes you look at calls too, because we've already sold off on that piece of news. Um, yeah, that's basically how I would anticipate. That's how I'd play it. And you want an if or scenario where you can be ready for both the parts. So, Mo, I will ask you this question. Seeing that the, the minutes came out, because I did, I, I totally missed all of today's action. You hit me up and you were like, hey, man, how was your day? Did you did you take part in the action? I did not. I had a terrible morning. I got... um got wicked with uh, in a futures market so i had i've been off my game for the past two weeks um i don't know what's going on with, with the futures with me and futures has been off my game so i shut it down and i moved on with my life for today so i definitely missed all the the good action but i did see see the room and the stuff that you were posting but question is since um there wasn't any i guess different news in a minute do you anticipate that now that the market's going to drop i mean it rallied right because it's basically saying there's no change 
it rallied. But do you think that uh, it's going to end up tanking again? No, I don't. I think we get to 4,015 first uh, before we tank. And you can use this as a gauge. Look at what crypto is doing today. Look at what oil is doing today. Um, if if we start selling oil, that's a very risk on situation for a growth stock. So if you go look at snow, snow went from 130 to 150. You're going to want to watch stocks like SC, Net. I think we're going to tomorrow might be a consolidation day. Uh, but I think we have another about roughly 200 points for us to go up before we start tanking again. Now, what a lot of people don't understand is there's a lot of flow coming in for puts. That's just the funds. They're going to add in puts and they're always going to be in profit because they're adding August, September, November, December. So, yeah, they might go down 20, 30 percent. But with the sheer volume they add and the amount of money they have, they keep averaging down or rolling up or down. That's stuff you shouldn't be watching when you're trading. You need to watch what's happening this week what's happening today. So that's kind of, so to answer your question, I think we rip before we die also because of seasonality. Yeah. They said July historically is actually a positive month. Um, so it's usually a good month, but once we get to OPEX, I would say that uh, that's why I would probably anticipate some selling happening. Yes, sir. OPEX CPI numbers. So their um, earnings starts in uh, around July 15th. Um, next week, I think we're going to go pretty bad in terms of, You'll see people like in trade both sides, you're going to see highs and lows. So the rip is another 200 points, which could take two days, which could take three days. So it's not like a, we're going to go 44 or 4,500. Yeah. So, all right. Be careful out there, everybody, once again.